Hi friends. Here in this video, we shall discuss about sacroiliitis and ankylosing spondylitis. A female patient with age in between 25 to 30 came to OPD with pain over both dimples. She has a child of one year and she feels pain when continuously standing for a period of 15 minutes. The provisional diagnosis is sacroiliitis, which shall be diagnosed by proper clinical examination. Here, in the appellate anatomy, we already discussed the importance of sacroiliac joints, which transmits the weight of the body through vertebra towards both lower limbs. When we advise X-ray LS spine AP view, lumbosacral spine AP view, we can see sacroiliac joint with normal joint space. And here in this X-ray, it is fused due to chronic sacroiliitis. This is the sacroiliac joint and the clinical examination of sacroiliac joint includes mainly this clinical examination test. With the first examination itself, we can diagnose sacroiliitis and then we exclude the other clinical examination test. In pump handle, flexion of hip and knee and moving the leg towards opposite shoulder forcibly is the clinical examination test, pump handle test, in which the patient is in supine position and flex the knee and hip, then forcibly move the knee towards opposite shoulder by the examiner. This is the clinical examination of pump handle. If we are doing the pump handle test of right lower limb, then the patient felt pain over the right sacroiliac region. Fabers is nothing but flexion, abduction, and external rotation. Faber means flexion, abduction, and external rotation. And this Faber test is also known as Patrick test and figure of four test, figure of four test. In this, we are doing flexion of hip, abduction of hip, and then external rotation, and keep the affected limb in figure of four, which causes pain over the affected sacroiliac joint. This is pump handle, that means flexion of hip and knee and it is moved towards opposite shoulder. In this, we are checking the left and fix the left shoulder and move the left knee towards right shoulder. This is pump handle. This anterior gapping and posterior gapping test is to check whether there is sprain of sacroiliac ligaments. In anterior gapping, patient is in supine position and with both your hands, the anterior superior iliac spine is open out towards opposite side. With your hand, open out the anterior superior iliac spine towards opposite side. This test is anterior gapping, which is done to check whether there is an anterior sacroiliac ligament sprain. And posterior gapping, we are cumbersing, cumbersing both the and it is superior iliac spine and it shall be done in lateral position, either left lateral or right lateral. And with the support of the table, compress one sacroiliac joint. Here the patient is left lateral and compress the right ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine, to check posterior gapping, in which posterior gapping test is to check whether there is posterior sacroiliac ligament sprain. By checking anterior and posterior gapping, we shall able to check the patency of sacroiliac ligaments. Whenever there is sacroiliac ligament sprain also, the patient felt acute pain. Acute pain over the particular area and patient felt giving way also. The posterior gapping test is also known as SQUISH, S-Q-U-I-S-H, SQUISH test. In the initial phase, in sacroiliitis, amabhajana is very important. We shall also include Sindhuvara Aranda or Nirgundi Aranda in very small quantity along with the kashaya advised. In the initial phase, you shall ask the patient or advise the patient 
to be in this posture for a period of 10 minutes for the immediate relief. In this, this position is called 90-90 position. In 90-90 position, hip and knee is 90 degree flexed and transfer the weight of the leg in a stool kept like this. In this, the lower lumbar muscles and lower lumbar area felt completely relaxed in 90-90 posture. This shall be advised in the very initial phase itself and ask the patient to be in this position for a period of 10 minutes. If the patient lie on ground, then ask to lie in a mat. After the pain relief, patient shall be undergone with this rehabilitation isometric knee push exercise in which in hip and knee 90 degree without the support of a stool ask the patient to do knee extension and resist it with the hand. The hand is kept on the hamstring muscle and ask the patient to do knee extension and on the next phase ask the patient to keep the hand over the quadriceps and ask the patient to do hip flexion against resistance. Both hand and knee should be in same position. Don't move hand and knee. And isometric knee push exercise is done for left and right, which is very effective in sacroiliacus in the second phase of rehabilitation. First phase includes 90-90 position. And second phase, the most effective exercise is isometric knee push exercise. And also ask the patient to do salavasana. Salabhasana is also very effective in sacroiliacus. In bird dog posture, ask the patient to do left arm raise and right leg raise, which should be in a straight line like this. And then it shall be continuously done alternatively for a cycle of 10. Here we shall hold in isometric knee push exercise, we shall hold it for 5 seconds and in a cycle of 20 times. This is the start position. This exercise is also good for sacroiliacus. And then press back and hold. Then pull it forward and hold. All these exercises shall be advised in the second phase to get rid of sacroiliacus and avoid recurrence. Regarding prevention of sacroiliacus, this advice shall be advised in the future after the treatment. Don't skip steps up or down stairs. Avoid stepping up and down two stairs at a time. Don't jump on one leg. Don't take long steps. Don't cross your legs. Do sit with your legs wide and maintain your posture with support of lower lumbar area to the back in a pressed position like this. Spine should be straight and it should be pressed. Don't stand with weight on one side and don't sit with weight on one side. Don't carry heavy objects on one side and both use caution during sexual activity that means when you are on a weight bearing position, avoid weight bearing towards one side, which causes sacroiliacus. This is a case presented in OP, a male patient with age 90, pain over a dimple with morning stiffness. In such condition, if the age of the patient is between 16 and 25, and if it is a male patient, and patient felt morning stiffness along with pain over a dimple, then we shall suspect angulosis spondylitis and do the clinical examination. In AS, clinical examination is more important than radiological investigation and also hematological investigation. In AS, the clinical examination mainly include the clinical examination of sacroiliacus because the fusion starts in sacroiliac area and it fusion continues from lower area to upper area. So initially, the lumbar flexion is affected in angulosis spondylitis. So that we shall check Schober's sign. Then in chronic case, occiput to wall test shall be checked. Chest expansion shall be assessed. And in the initial phase itself, you shall check an X-ray, LS spine, AP view and lateral view to check whether there is sacroiliacus. If there is fusion like this, then the it starts, the sacroiliacus starts and then well, the fusion of anterior longitudinal ligament, posterior longitudinal ligament, interspinous ligaments, it causes ossification and we shall able to see bamboo spine in the next phase. Here you shall see occiput to wall test. Here when the patient stand close 
to the valve normally occiput touch out the valve but the patient chronic patient with ankylosis spondylitis the patient can't occiput doesn't touch the valve and next one is schober's test in schober's test first mark a point at the dimple of venus this is the first point then secondly mark a point 10 cm above the dimple of venus and in the third phase mark a point the third point 5 cm distal to the dimple of venus first point is dimple of venus second point is 10 cm above dimple of venus third point is 5 cm below dimple of venus and the total distance between second and third point is 10 cm when the patient is in lumbar flexed position the total the 15 cm will turn up to 20 or above 20 that means 5 cm above will be increased in the flexion of lumbar spine if it is below 5 if it is below 20 then that means lumbar flexion is absent and we shall suspect normal flexion of lumbar spine is reduced which is due to fusion of lumbar spine occurs in ankylosing spondylitis from the of venous mark a point about 10 cm and mark a point below 5 cm the total distance between the second point and third point is normally 15 cm then ask the patient to do lumbar flexion and then you shall able to see that lumbar flexion is absent here patient is flexion is possible only due to thoracic flexion and hip flexion here you shall able to see it is only 17 centimeter it is below 20 and this is due to absence of lumbar flexion which occurs in angulosing spondylitis also due also measure the expansion of chest in male patient it is measured through the nipple and check the difference in deep inhalation and exhalation which is normal is up to 5 or 6 cm the difference should be normal up to 5 or 6 cm and if it is below 5 if it's only 3 cm then the patient's rib cage is also started fusion which causes a recurrent respiratory tract infection which uh, is a fatal condition in ankylosing spondylitis. Coming I mean, to the management of ankylosing spondylitis, the most important thing regarding AS is the early detection, early diagnosis of AS, which preserves the life expectancy and quality of life of that particular patient. So, early detection is of very important, and clinical examination through clinical examination it is possible. The hematological investigation includes HLAB 27 which is very costly and also not confirmatory in all cases. So clinical examination is a must and early diagnosis is very important in preserving the life expectancy and quality of life. Regarding AS, amabajana is of utmost importance and avoid labana, external application of any oil in the initial phase. And in angulosis spondylitis, more amabajana is needed as it is autoimmune. Sometimes chronic uveitis, enteropathic arthritis like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis may be associated with ankylosis spondylitis. In the initial phase of ankylosis spondylitis, whether there is a chance of knee pain associated with AS in the initial phase. And for ankylosis spondylitis regarding the management initial amabajana for a prolonged time amabajana shall be advised with ubasaya and anubasaya, giving Thyla in a very small quantity, check whether Amabajana is complete, then start Snehabana. Snehabana is of utmost importance. Acha Snehabana shall be advised for angulosis spondylitis to avoid the recurrence and for the complete relief of angulosis spondylitis. Coming to the rehabilitation of AS, extension exercise and pranayama, both are very important. Extension exercise to preserve the range of motion, extension exercise shall be advised to preserve the patency of rib case and to check the moments of rib, to preserve the moments of rib and to delay, delay the fusion of rib, pranayama shall be advised. Pranayama is of utmost importance. Swimming is also a very good exercise advised in AS patients 
swimming also gives good relief and to preserve the range of motion in ankylosing spondylitis after the completion of sneha pana rasayana shall be advised for a period of 2 to 3 months in ankylosing spondylitis regular follow up op follow up in a gap of 6 months and 1 year is a must in management of ankylosing spondylitis regarding the ayurvedic management of ankylosing spondylitis with specific guidelines gives good result and on each follow up check schober sign and also check the difference in between the gap of fingers and ground on lumbar flexion both shall be checked as part of follow up to know the improvement in management of ankylosing spondylitis here in this video we discussed initially sacral ileitis how to diagnose sacral ileitis through clinical examination like pump handle fabers anterior gapping and posterior gapping then we advise the management of sacral ileitis and also the rehabilitation in sacral ileitis i mean to ankylosing spondylitis the most important thing is early detection which shall be done if a patient come to opd in between age 16 to 25 male patient by because male is to female ratio of as is 3 is to 1 and so schober sign should be checked in such a patient and do the radiological investigation to check whether there is sacral ileitis early detection is very important then the management as per condition is of utmost importance because after complete amabhajana internal sneha should be given as it is a autoimmune disorder and it's a chronic condition so that very care should be taken in the management of ankylosing spondylitis and rehabilitation like extension exercise swimming and pranayama shall be advised for the quality preserving the quality of life in ankylosing spondylitis to preserve the life expectancy and quality of life of patient we shall give utmost care with regular follow up also thank you